Tiny11 has problems. And honestly, so many people are recommending it now that I have to make this video just to balance things out because you should never use a custom Windows ISO on an install. I can tell you I've done IT work for over 20 years and I've seen so many problems with these custom ISOs from botnets, key loggers, other things that make you compromised when installing them. It may not happen immediately, but it probably will happen. And I want to go over why that is, why you should never use a Tiny11, even if your favorite YouTuber recommends it. Heck, I like ETA Prime. I think he makes great videos, but this is a terrible video by him. And I've made terrible videos, not to just call him out, but there's other people here. Ghost Spectre vs. Tiny11. This is something you should never do. But let's break down why. Uh, why are the people doing this? Why would you you know, distribute a custom ISO and, and the risks you take when you do use one? Because I've seen a lot of YouTubers starting to say, hey, tiny 11's okay, I'm using tiny 11. And you know, we've also seen an uptick in YouTube hacks, maybe some correlation there, but let's get into the problems it has. We have YouTubers here, we have companies recommending tiny 11, and why is it you always download it from kind of like a, not an official site, it's like archive.org or uh, usually some kind of like media fire, <laughs> you know, a mega, you, you get it from all kinds of places, but never really an official source, usually from shady, shady spots. The big thing is, what can happen with it? Main problems, botnets, viruses, key loggers, crypto miners, all these can be bundled into these small packages and exceptions can be made in Windows Defender to bypass it. Most people know I'm not a big fan of Windows Defender. I've made videos on that, but at the same time, it's uh, antivirus is just a layer of security. Too many people rely 100% on antivirus and that is just a recipe for disaster. Uh, Security is all about the layers, and antivirus is just a very, very small layer in, in your security footprint. So let's get into why they would do it uh, and why you should not trust any custom ISO. I don't personally make any ISO, even though I have a ton of debloat utilities and GitHub repositories showing people how to debloat their system. It's not uh, something I ever will redistribute, mainly because it's illegal. And that's the big thing. Any modified Windows is, is legal. There was a guy that actually got sentenced to 15 months in jail. There was even a Vox video on YouTube that went into it. Uh, and here's a Polygon article where he actually was just salvaging old Windows systems with legit Windows keys and then just supplying a recovery CD. So he wasn't even modifying Windows, really. He was just redistributing it uh, with already good licenses from, from systems that were getting thrown out. And he went to prison for 15 months. So now let's think, okay, so these, these developers are risking prison time redistributing Windows. The biggest thing when they redistribute these things is that it can't have a huge footprint. You, the user, needs to feel better about installing these, and they do a pretty good job of this. But just a keylogger running in the background is really not something that's really easily detected, especially if it's done as a rootkit. And it can just sit there and grab all your passwords, credit cards you type into the web. It could grab session tokens. You saw a whole bunch of like Linus getting hacked the other day. They said it came from an actual person saying, here you go. But hey, who knows? It could have been a Tiny11 install in his environment and then someone logged into that computer. That's a possibility. Uh, you know, these are things we need to think about. You also have just spreading chaos, installing viruses for the fun of it. And that's probably less of a thing these days. Uh, more often than not, maybe you are a zombie or a part of a botnet where you're like a sleeper agent and then you get activated whenever they want because you, you can do that. All these things are possible. And many people are like, well, I'm scanning Tiny11 for viruses or I'm scanning Ghost Spectre or whatever uh, system you want to use here, fill in the blank. And it's not coming up with anything using Windows Defender or, or I'm not seeing anything. Well, the system itself is modified. I can write programs to control you and your Windows and then distribute that ISO and no antivirus is going to catch that because it's at a system level. It can be loaded before the, the Windows even starts up. There's a lot of ways to get into to system, as I've shown in the past in many other videos as well. So that's really the reason or rationale behind distributing these custom ISOs and why you shouldn't trust them. But uh, what about building it yourself? And this is where I kind of like Tiny11 Builder. 
Uh, and I wanted to kind of share this builder with you guys and just say, if you do like Tiny11, reproduce it yourself. Uh, NT Dev, which I, I'm not saying, hey, this is totally what he's doing, but he does give out his GitHub that has all these things. Now, this executable file, anytime you have an executable file, even with GitHub, it can be a little sus. Like I downloaded this and I wanted to talk about digital signatures because there's another thing that's happened recently that you probably might draw a correlation. 3CX being hacked, they were using a, a false signing or false digital signing to basically get through and, and infect a lot of people as well. And I wanted to show this executable file and its digital signature because this file I can't find in any of the Microsoft servers or packages. And it looks to be modified. Uh, I'm not saying that that's what's happened, but uh, it's something that you don't really need this file. And if you need to use an official Microsoft tool, download it from Microsoft. In my little article here, I actually give you the ADK that where you get OSC DIMG from that builds the, the ISO. Uh, get that from the official Microsoft source. You can go ahead and use these scripts in here as I did go through these batch files and I did not see anything malicious with them. So these scripts are actually pretty good. I would just replace the executable and use the official one from Microsoft as I just don't trust this modified one as when we pull this up and I have all these pulled up here, we go right click properties, go to digital signatures, timestamps not available. We go to details, you can see 140 kilobits. This is the actual uh, version. So we will match up this file version and the size should match when we get it directly from uh, Microsoft. So that's the cute things. One, timestamp might be unavailable is a little sus. And then this size should match that. And when I pull up, all of my searches from installing the official one from Microsoft using the Windows kit, you can see none of the kilobytes actually launch up and match up at all. This one's the closest one, which looks to be the AMD 64. You can see right here, this is the one you'd probably want to use. We go to properties, we match this up. You can see from the details that the size is not the same. The version is the same. So that's interesting. Digital signatures. This one does have a timestamp. This one doesn't have a timestamp. So was this file modified in some way? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't get why this is different. And if this was just maybe downloaded at another time, I'm not calling this person out at all. I think what they've done is good with a lot of the deep loading. But at the same time, it's a little sus. And that's one thing that if you're going to use these executables, just grab the ones from official Microsoft that will work the same way. And you know that that executable is good, not doing anything malicious. So kind of an interesting uh, tidbit there. And you might be thinking, well, how do you fake a digital signature like they did with 3CX? And there's another article that I just kind of interesting as well. There's an actual 10 year old exploited bug in Windows that caused that hack to happen. And you can actually read through this article. I'll, I'll link it down from Bleeping Computer. But it, it basically allows you to modify these files and then keep the dig digital signature as if nothing happened. And that's what happened with uh, 3CX as well. So, uh, you know, 3CX probably a little bit lacks security, but also Microsoft's a bit to blame here because this is a 10 year old exploit that just was uh, used in this particular hack. But again, I wanted to show that these digital signatures, while are good, another layer of security that can be compromised, much like your antivirus can have uh, compromises in it. And uh, when you get into these custom ISOs, there's so much that you can do uh, to basically bypass all these layers of security. And you're, you're entrusting that one person you don't know the name of that has some pseudonym that redistributes these things what is their their purpose? I want you to think about that. I want you to like, why would they do this? Why would they break the law so you can have a deep bloated Windows? And uh, I think the answer is, do they just do it out of the goodness of their heart? Or is there maybe another intent? What's the bigger probability? I'm not saying that that's the truth, but I'm just saying you're trusting this person that you don't know their name, you don't know where they live, you don't know anything about them, you just know that your favorite YouTuber or some software company or maybe a, a tech news article recommended it. 
and you're entrusting your entire security, your entire livelihood is some on some people's computers, you're entrusting it to that person. So when it comes to custom ISOs, it is a no-go. Don't ever do it. I'll never redistribute an ISO. I'll never do any of this. These are just some of the things that can happen. And uh, if you do install Tiny11, you do install custom Windows ISOs, there's a good chance you're going to be compromised.